When the Nokia 6 came to India, pretty much every other phone in that segment had better internals. The ones who bought it were the ones who have who valued the Nokia branding and stock Android, of course. But now things have changed a lot. With the last few launches, HMD Global's Nokia has been very, very aggressive with the pricing, and the 5.1 Plus could just possibly be the best value for money proposition they've ever put out on the market. I've used this phone as my primary for over a week and in today's video, let's see how it fared. Is it as good a deal as it seems to be on paper? Well, let's find out. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech and welcome to my full review of the Nokia 5.1 Plus. Let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please consider turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon and in case you missed it, here's a card to our latest giveaway. So the first thing you feel when you pick this phone up is how good it is in hand. From a build quality standpoint, it feels solid. The glass to the front and back make it feel premium. Now that's a line I've said many times but usually it's for phones priced much higher. At this price, I don't think anything else feels better in hand. Now remember the display is 5.8 inches, so it's very easy to handle single-handed. Now it's great to see this without any major cons like cutting a headphone jack or micro SD. Additionally, for the first time since I think Le Eco, we have a phone at this segment with a Type-C port. Honestly, with brands adopting things like the notch only to use micro USB, that kind of feels so weird and I'm happy to see HMD Global not compromise with the 5.1 Plus. That said, where there is compromise is with the display. The 5.1 Plus uses the HD Plus display. That's a 19 by 9 panel with a notch. Now, barring the lower resolution, I didn't find any issues with this panel. Uh, whether I was browsing the web or just using apps, watching YouTube videos or playing a game, the display felt perfectly good. The colors were great. The viewing angles excellent. And even while shooting outdoors, the display caught bright enough so that visibility wasn't an issue. So it's 720p, which is kind of okay-ish for the segment, but the quality of the panel itself, can't really complain about that. Now, all this wouldn't count for much if HMD Global had thrown in, say, a Snapdragon 425, like a certain other brand. Guess who? Anyway, coming back, this one's powered by a Helio P60 chip, one that slots slightly lower than the Snapdragon 660, and it performs great. I had no slowdowns or lag at all in my time with this phone. From a software perspective, we've got Android 8.1 Oreo on this guy and it's all stock since the Nokia 5.1 Plus, like all of the Nokia phones recently released, is part of the Android 1 program. So jumping between apps, scrolling through feeds, it all felt fast and snappy. The Nokia 5.1 Plus makes you feel like you're using a much pricier phone. As far as gaming goes, remember the 5.1 Plus is pushing fewer pixels than anything else that we've seen with the Helio P60. Even with a full HD display, the P60 hasn't had many issues, so it delivered here. Even with some intensive titles, the 5.1 Plus managed to run it easily. The fingerprint scanner was fast and accurate, absolutely no complaints. And Google's trusted face is what you'd use for facial recognition, and that worked as well as you could expect it to. So overall, as far as performance goes, the Nokia 5.1 Plus has you covered. Now to round off specs, we get 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage, and all this is backed up by a 3060 milliamp hour battery. Talking about that, the battery life, well, that was just about okay here. It's kind of like the OnePlus 6, or mildly better than that. I keep going back to the OnePlus 6 because that's one day battery life for me. Uh, you know, when you use it and you need to be a little watchful, and most days it would still end up getting you through a day on a single charge. That's the one plus six for me. So it's kind of like a measuring stick mentally and I keep going back to it. The 5.1 plus was similar with moderate use, a couple of hours of calls, 30 minutes of streaming videos, 30 minutes of mild gaming, some pictures, Wi-Fi uh, and 4G on all day with some social media here and there. With this kind of use, I'd end most of my days with about 10% left. Well, not super fast, there is a 10 watt charger included, so that can get you back up relatively quickly. 
Moving on, let's talk about audio. The output via the speaker was moderately loud. The quality itself was good. No distortion. Similarly, audio via the headphone jack was good too. I had no issues with cell reception or call quality, but if I had one complaint, it would be Bluetooth. It was quite iffy. Very usable, of course, but from time to time, I'd need to pause a track and play or disconnect and reconnect. I'd use Bluetooth for about three hours on and off a day uh, for calls, music, and so on. And this would happen to me once or twice a day. Not a deal breaker by any means, but definitely worth a mention. And with that, let's move on to the cameras. We have a 13 megapixel F2 primary coupled with a five megapixel depth sensor. And a good lighting, there was plenty of detail. The shutter response was good. There's enough bokeh. The color reproduction is also very natural. The dynamic range is a little average though. And the low light the images get noisier and softer, the detail level drops, but that is to be expected on a phone in this segment. That said, it's not unusable. Portrait mode options are available for both the front and rear cameras and the results were acceptable. Other than that, HMD Global offers some AR stickers and of course, the both the options too. As for video, we are capped at Full HD at 30 FPS. The quality isn't great. There's a fair bit of focus hunting, the details are in there, the footage looks a little muddy to be honest and the exposure changes are very noticeable, they aren't subtle like we'd expect them to be. For what it's worth, there is EIS and it does a good job of stabilizing the footage. The 8 megapixel f2.2 camera as long as the light levels are good, the selfie camera performs well. Here are a few more examples. And with that, let's get to the price. Now, if this were last year, I would have expected HMD Global to price it at 15, 16,000 rupees. But given their newfound aggression, I expected this phone to launch in India for 12, 12,500 rupees. But they've gone ahead and surprised us all with a 11K price tag. This is a huge change for HMD Global. And remember, they also happen to have a great track record with updates. Even weird, underwhelming phones like the Nokia 3 have received consistent updates, security patches and all that. And given this is Android One, there is absolutely no bloat or ads in the user interface. Now that's a feature worth talking about, I guess, in every video. Now given all that, the 5.1 Plus is a great deal at this price. It is a very reliable and dependable offering from HMD Global's Nokia. And if you are in the market, uh, for a phone in this segment, the 5.1 Plus will definitely not let you down. So there you have it, my two cents on this phone. Do you agree with my conclusion here? Do you disagree? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, I guess it's time I bid you adieu. Share this video with friends and family if you can. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on how you felt about it. Also subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.